Fronts. For more on all of this, we can go across to France 24's Iris Makler standing by in Jerusalem. Iris, good afternoon. Israel says it's approved plans for Lebanon, uh, presumably to keep Hezbollah in check. What's the significance of all of this? The significance of this is that we're seeing an increase in the rhetoric as well as in the actual fighting. So yesterday, Hezbollah released a nine-minute video that it had shot by itself of sensitive sites in the north of Israel. That means its drone got in behind Israeli defences, shot uh, the northern pier near the city of Haifa, shot naval bases, uh, and returned. And it put that out as a warning, if you like, to Israel. We are keeping t a tight watch on you. Last night, we heard the Israeli military in response, I think, saying that what they have is a plan for the attack in Lebanon. So you can see the propaganda channel. The thing is that the reality on the ground is an escalation as well. And it's how these two interact that we can't, you know, means that we can't predict the future at the moment. So there are relentless um, Hezbollah rocket attacks into Israel as I was coming on air in the past hour, for example, and I heard the IDF saying today that there had been, that's the Israel Defence Force spokesperson, saying there'd been more attacks from Lebanon into Israel than there had been from Gaza uh, during this war. But both sides, and, and <laughs> before I get to but, and what we are seeing is that there are tens of thousands of internally displaced people, uh, Lebanese in southern Lebanon, Israelis in northern Israel who are not living in their homes. But nevertheless, despite this and despite this escalation, it's still an escalation within limits. And what that means to us or to people who are watching it is that these limits are that, not, that uh, the Lebanese Hezbollah does not attack civilian targets inside Israel. The Israelis limit themselves at the moment to Hezbollah targets. And that is, you know, they take out Hezbollah operatives. They don't take out ordinary um, Hezbollah. They don't take out ordinary Lebanese targets. So with that, all of that together, you can say that there are still limits. But, you know, how long with this increase of rhetoric will they be able to hold to those limits? And how can we be sure they won't push each other over one of those limits? Exactly, because uh, another thing that is going on, which is all linked to all of this, is we had yesterday uh, the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu who put out a statement in English where he essentially said uh, he spoke to the uh, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, who was recently uh, in your neck of the woods, and he said uh, that it was inconceivable that in the past few months the administration has been withholding weapons and ammunition to Israel. Washington, for its part, says it has no idea what Netanyahu is talking about here. That's right. Uh, that's what we heard from the White House press secretary. So we can see that there is a little bit of friction, either you could say between Israel and the US, or more likely or more accurately, perhaps, between uh, Israel's prime minister and its current administration in Washington. Israel has sent two um, people, two officials to Washington this week, and they were going to be meeting with high level administration officials. That meeting has been cancelled. It's being reported in the Israeli media that it's a response to this. So they are there and they're not being invited to the meetings. The two national, Israeli National Security Council officials are not being invited to those meetings. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is still going to address both houses of Congress next month. It's not clear. So in a way, you know, his critics are saying he's protected himself still. But you can see that there's a deterioration in the relationship between the two at this critical moment and that Washington is very concerned about, as it has been since October the 7th, about a second front with Lebanon. Indeed. Uh, they, they, they also kept warning Hezbollah not to get involved. They kept saying don't, uh, if you recall. Let's talk about what's happening on the ground uh, in uh, Gaza, Iris, because last week we had the U.S. Secretary of State uh, shuttling between countries in the Middle East, trying to get that elusive ceasefire deal off the ground. But it seems that ceasefire deal has remained elusive for now. That's right. We do know that, or hear that there are back-channel talks going on uh, still with the parties, the mediators, and a reference back to Hamas and to Israeli negotiators who don't meet face to face. I have um, the we have heard from the Israel Defence Forces who have let Israeli journalists come into Rafah uh, this within the past 24 hours, and they've been reporting that the commander there says that there's four weeks left of fighting 
that um, he's described the warfare as different to what it had been in sections of the other sections of the Gaza Strip, notably in the north and in Khan Yunus, uh, a bit to the north of Rafah. Uh, and what that implies is that a war there, the war, the operation in Rafah will be over. If that operation is over, does that mean that the Gaza war is over? Is that the time for a negotiation to come to some fruition? And will that also affect the, the war in the north or the possibility of war in the north? So everything, I think, looks back to Gaza and to the military operation and the war there. Iris, thank you very much for that. Iris Michael reporting there for us from Jerusalem.